continuing with some interest problems we're going to look at a student loan that is paid back in less than a year after 120 days in fact okay we'll also look at a savings account where the money is not left in for a whole year the money is withdrawn after 30 days so there's still some interest earned but couldn't be as much as a whole year because you've only left the money in for 30 days so we'll we'll use this formula here to figure that out for both okay so start with example three you've got a student loan a student takes out an emergency loan of eight hundred dollars at an interest rate of nine percent now the nine percent means per year okay how much interest does the student pay if the loan is paid back in 120 days so in other words if they paid the loan back after exactly one year the interest would be nine percent of eight hundred right but if you pay it back in less than a year, the interest should be less, obviously. And it is. In fact, you use this formula where the interest equals the P, the principal, the amount borrowed, 800, times the rate, the interest rate, percentage, times the time, where one year equals 360 days. Okay, So it's time in years. So we'll see how that works. So let's write this formula down for fun anyway. I equals P times principal times rate times time. Okay. So the interest amount is what we're going to figure out. How much interest does the student pay back? So we've got to take the principal, 800, right? Times the rate, 9%. Uh, and then times the time. Now the time is 120 days, okay? But um, we have to, well, first of all, I mean, I shouldn't even, I mean, yeah, this is, that's basically what it is, but th this equation is dumb. Uh, the, the, the rate should be as a decimal, the time should be in years. So these two guys are not gonna work for us as they are. So we have to turn the rate, the rate or the percentage is 9%. Now 9%, what's that as a decimal? It's 9%, 9 per cent, 9 per 100 or 0 0.09. Okay, so we need the rate as a decimal and the time needs to be measured in years. So the time is the amount of days, 120 days, divided by 360 days. Uh, taking out some holidays, uh, banks consider a year to have 360 days in it, okay? So 120 days over 360 days, that becomes, well you could divide by 10 on top and bottom, that becomes 12 over 36, and what does that become now? 2 into 12, six times, two to three goes once, and one over, two into 16 is eight times, so we get six over 18, what does that become? Six into six goes once, six into 18, three times. So the time becomes one third, or one third of a year. So what we should do is, sure, the principal is in dollars, $800, okay? The rate, though, should be as a decimal, 0 0.09. And the 120 days should be converted to years. So we have time equals one third of a year, or one third years, let's say, okay? So you go 120 over 360, okay? So uh, that should have been put in like this. I mean, this is a complete mistake. I just I was just trying to illustrate, you know, what what needs to be there. But it should be 120 days over 360 days, which becomes one over three, okay, one third. So what we do is is we go ahead and calculate all of this. Now, if we just go straight across, so we can see what's happening, we're going to take the 800. We're going to multiply that by 0 0.09. So we're going to get 9% of 800, right? 
zero, zero, 72. Two decimal points in the question, two in the answer. 72 is the answer here. So the 800 times 0 0.09 becomes um, 72. So I end up with 72 times 1 third. So the trick is that if the student paid the loan back at the end of the year, they would have to pay the full 9% of $800, which of course, which is in fact $72, okay? But because they paid the loan back early, after only 120 days, you take the interest amount of the year, which is 72, and 120 days is one third of a year, right? And that makes sense, because look, 120 plus 120 uh, plus 120, what does that give? That gives 6, 3, that gives 360. So a financial year has 360 days in it, they say, because they take out some holidays, right? So, um, you know, and, and so, so basically it's a third of a year. So you take the interest that should have been paid back at the end of the year, and, and you just take a third of that. Okay, so what's 72 multiplied by a third? What's a third of 72? Well, you times that, that becomes 72 over 1, right? Okay, and so um, we have 72 over 3, which is what? 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 7 goes uh, 2 times remainder 1, 3 into 12 goes 4 times, right? So 24 over 1 or 24, okay? So at the end of all that, the interest is, the interest on the loan, $24, okay? So basically a third of $72 what they would have to pay at the end of the year. Okay. So um, the total amount then that they that the student has to pay back to repay uh, would of course be the eight hundred plus the interest of twenty four, right? So they'd have to pay back eight hundred and twenty four dollars, right? Okay, let's take this example for um, a savings account where there is an early withdrawal of money. And we use the same formula, interest equals principal times the rate times time. $2,400 is deposited in a savings account that pays 4%. If the money is withdrawn at the end of 30 days, how much interest is earned? So our equation is I equals P times R times T. So interest equals the principal, the 2,400, multiplied by the rate. Now we're going to turn the rate into a percentage, or into a decimal. The rate at the moment is 4%. What's that as a decimal? Well, 4% 4 is 4 per 100, which is 0 0.04, right? The time now is 30 days, and how many years is that? What is 30 days in terms of years? Well, you've got to take the 30, you've got to say that uh, a financial year, one year is 360 days. Okay, that's something we need to memorize. A financial year is 360 days. So, we take the 30 days and we divide it by 360 days, okay, and so we figure this out. So this is 30 over 360, divide by 10, the threes cross count, the zeros cross cancel, so you get 30 over, th 3 over 36, which is what? 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 3 goes once, 3 into 6 goes twice, 1 over 12. 
So the time is 30 days, but if you divide that by 360, you get 1 over 12 years, a twelfth of a year, basically. Okay. So our time is 1 twelfth of a year, and that's what we need to use. So we go back to the formula, and the time is 1 twelfth of a year, right? Um, and then we need to calculate this. So, 2400 times 0 0.04. Let's do that. Zero, zero, 16, carry the 1. 8 and 1 is 9. Two decimal places in the question, so 2 in the answer. 96.00 or 96. So 4% of 2400 would be uh, $96. So if the person left the money for the whole year, they would get $96 in interest. They withdrew the money early, so they're not going to get as much. They withdrew the money after one twelfth of a year. 30 days has became one twelfth of a year. Okay, And um, so you got to take the 96 that they would have got and divide it by 12. Multiply it by 1 over 12. So 96 is 96 over 1, right? So our interest becomes 96 over 12. And what's that? 2 into 12 goes 6 times. 2 into 9 goes 4 times. Remainder 1, 8 times. So we get 48 over 6. Do you know your 6 times tables? 6 into 6 goes once. 6 into 48 goes 8 times. Right? 8 over 1, which equals 8. So the interest amount interest paid to the customer eight dollars. Okay. So if the money is withdrawn at the end of thirty days, how much interest is earned or interest earned or paid is eight dollars. Right. Ah, I should say earned, huh? Interest earned in the account, eight dollars, right? And the last part is, what is the total amount withdrawn? If you withdraw all your money, what do you get? Well, surely you get the original plus the interest, right? The original amount you put in there, plus the interest. And that should give you the total, right? The original amount was 2400, 2400, right? What was the interest? Eight dollars. So add that total amount withdrawn, two thousand four hundred and eight. Right.